Hey, Tom, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Thank you for joining us for today's Super Bowl 55 media availability with Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback Tom Brady. Our first question is going to come from Tom Curran. Thomas. It's an old familiar name. I know that name. I know that guy. Long um, time, pal. 20 years. 20 years. Congratulations again. I'm glad to see your success this year. Very simple question. How often do you say to yourself, why me? Why did I get this opportunity in life? Why did it break this way for Tom? You know, I think that's part of having a, you know, I, it's a, it's a great question. I, I think about that quite a bit, actually. And, um, you know, I think just being grateful for, you know, all the blessings in my life. And I've got, uh, you know, more than anyone could imagine. So in the end, I just try to do the best I could do, you know, with uh, every situation. And um, you understand there's a lot of people that have supported me over the time to get to this point. So I think any time you get a chance to realize your dreams and, and I've been, you know, between high school, college, pro football, doing this for almost 30 years. Um, just so appreciative of all the different people who have helped me along the way. Uh, just so grateful for all the experiences that I had. And um, hopefully that, you know, I can, in my own way, give back uh, as best I can to, you know, other people who may be looking to achieve and accomplish their dreams too. So um, it's a big picture approach, you know, at different times in my life, I haven't had the perspective that I've had. Um, you know, I have a lot of perspective now just on this career. I wouldn't say on life. I think that I still learn it from a lot of people who have more perspective on life. Um, but from a football standpoint, you know, I think a lot of it for me is uh, trying to give younger players the information they need to be the best they could be. So uh, in the end, I'm just, uh, again, just very grateful, very appreciative. And, um, you know, that's pretty much how I feel on a, on a daily basis. We're going to go over to Camille Kostick. I know that name too. <laughs> hey, Tom. Hi, Camille. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I, I know you probably weren't expecting to hear me. I'm corresponding with entertainment tonight this week. And when I found out that I got to talk to you, I was like, absolutely. Let's do but it. You have me like in tears over here a little bit. That it was really, um, I really felt that when you were speaking about that. So thank you. Um, and I want to switch gears a little bit because I feel like of all people in Rob's life, you and I spend probably some of the most time with him. So I know at home, Rob, and I know that you yeah. know football locker room, Rob. So yeah. please tell me, I saw a little bit of an impersonation that you've done earlier before, and I got a kick out of it because you did pretty good, I have to say, because I, I like to mimic rap a lot. So can you tell me, give me like an insider edition of what it's like. I know you guys are super adamant about your treatments as much as recovery and training. Yeah. So what's feel good, got a couple of TV 12 workouts in, locker room gearing up for Super Bowl Rob. <laughs> oh man, you know what, he's super excited because um, you know, he feels so good. You know, he's played 20 games this year. So it's the most I think he's ever played in his career. So, you know, he's a, one of the most unique people, as you know, um, just being around him. Um, he's so positive. I think everybody wishes in their next life, they can, they come back as, as, uh, as Rob, just because, uh, he's got such a great personality about him, just his way of being positive and he's a real high achiever. Um, he's very competitive and I see the competitive nature, the determination, like if you're, you know, when you're down and out, you want him with you. And I think that speaks to him as a teammate, as a person. And um, I love playing with them. You know, he's, I've known him for a long time and I'm just so proud of all his accomplishments. He's an amazing guy. And uh, you know, I know for both of us, we, we, uh, you know, we re we rely on each other a lot for different things. And, um, you know, I'll be looking for him this Sunday. So that's the most important thing. We're going to go over to Play 60 Kid, Amia Brannon. Hey, Tom. I'm Amaya. How are you? Hi, Amaya. Hi. How are you? Good. Nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you, too. So I'm 10 years old and around the same age as your kids. They've cheered for you in almost every Super Bowl you've been in. 
Do you have any family traditions about the big game and how will you celebrate if you win? Wow. So how will I celebrate if I win? I'll be very, I'll be surrounded by my kids who are your age. So <laughs> that's uh, the best part about winning is having the people uh, that have helped you get there and support you there with you to enjoy it. So um, some of the best memories I've had in my life were being with my kids right after the Super Bowl and celebrating with them. So I hope we have that experience on Sunday. It's going to be a really tough game. So we're going to have to go earn it. But if, if we get the job done, it's that's exactly what I'll be doing. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Amaya. You're welcome. We're going to go over to Greg Allman. Hey, Tom, we hear a lot about the coaches on this Buck staff being early risers, how early in they are into the office. How early are you getting into the facility this week? Uh, probably get in about um, 6.15 or so. So pretty early. Uh, I think some of them beat me in. So I think everyone's in here to try to get as much preparation as we can. There's a lot to study. It's a, a, uh, a tough team to prepare for because they're very talented. They have a lot of great uh, things that they do on defense that really challenge you. So, um, you know, it's been, been a lot of preparation. This whole time it's been uh, really hardcore prep. And now we ultimately have to be confident what we're doing and go out there and get the job done. We're going to go over to Susie Colbert. I know that name. Hi, Tom. Hi, Susie. So as we get closer to game time now, when we talked, you mentioned, you know, Sunday is such a long day and just not using up too much energy. I wonder, obviously, you've been down this road. What's the usual? What's the Sunday routine? And what have your emotions typically been like as the day progresses? You get closer to game time. You walk in the stadium. Yeah, it's just a, uh, you know, it's a slow build, I think, for this game because it's uh, two weeks of prep. You know, you feel like the physical stuff's, you know, pretty much done at this point. And then at this point, it's just going through in your head different situation scenarios, all your different calls that you'd have, um, you know, just trying to think about how they're going to play us. And then, um, again, I think that's where the mental prep, you, you really can't leave any stone unturned at this point. So we've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three, three just over three days left in the season. So... 72 hours plus, and, uh, you know, you got to use it all and use it to, to, our, to the maximum because this is a game that's really going to challenge us. This team is a very tough team to beat. You know, they haven't been beaten in a long time. Uh, got a great offense, got a great defense, really well coached, very good on special teams. So um, just try to chill you know, on Sunday, you know, get your, get your body, you know, mentally, physically, be in a good place to go out there and compete and uh, get ready for a great game. So it's a, it's a long game. It's a hard game. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a long day, but you got to be ready when the ball's kicked off and we're going to be challenged. They're going to challenge us and we got to go answer the challenge. All right. We're going to go over to Nora Princiati with the ringer. Yeah. Hey Tom. Um, so both your offense and Kansas City's have converted a decent number of third and longs this season. And I'm just curious sort of what the mentality is as an offense, as a quarterback, when you manage to get one of those and kind of stick it to a defense in that situation when they might have thought that they were about to get off the field? It feels good to do that just because, you know, you get kind of behind the down and distance on first, second down, it leaves you in third and long, and then you're able to bail yourself out of that situation. So it's a hard thing to do. I wouldn't try to make a, uh, you know, all day long, you know, trying to stay in third and long and see if we could – you know, make a bunch of plays because that's not uh, – it's very low percentage football. So we're going to have to play well on early downs, keep our third downs manageable, eliminate negative plays, eliminate negative runs, sacks, penalties. All those things are really important. It's got to be a really clean football game because you get stuck behind the down and distance. You know, these guys do a great job getting you off the field. So it's a um, – I think every play, you know, we're going to have to have maximum concentration. I, I they probably – 70, 70 plays left in the season. So all of them are going to have to be our very best. We have a few minutes left. We're going to go to Jonathan Jones from CBS Sports. Hey, Tom, your offenses over the nine Super Bowls have combined to score three points in the first quarter, one of those quirky little stats. And I know they're all their own individual entity, but did you ever or have you since tinkered at all with your prep as it specifically pertains to the fourth quarter and why or why not? Uh, 
I haven't thought about that much. Um, yeah, you'd obviously love to get off to a fast start. Um, hard to explain why or why not that hasn't happened. I'm sure there are all a lot of individual things um, why that's happened or not. So I don't know. I, I think ultimately for us this week, it's about, you know, taking every play, understanding what we're trying to execute on a given play and then go, go make it happen. So, you know, the one thing about this game, you're playing the other best team in the league. So there's not a lot of margin of error. If you do anything that's uh, unsound, it's not going to work. So the execution has to be at your best. And, um, you know, it should be that way. That's the way this game should be played. It should be the highest level of execution. And because uh, it's the most time to prepare, concentration, focus. Um, you just got to lay it on the line and, and uh, try to make the plays when, when we got them to, you know, when they're there to be made, we got to make them. We're going to go over to John Crick from the Toronto Sun. Hey, Tom. Four years ago this week, I asked you how the 39-year-old Tom Brady would fare against the 22-year-old Tom Brady in the combine agility and speed drills, and you said you'd crush it. Yeah. How would the 43-year-old Tom Brady fare against not just the 22-year-old, but the 39-year-old? Wow. Um, probably similar to when I was 39. Um, I'd say pretty similar, I think, throwing the ball uh, agility-wise. Um I'm going to work on my speed this off season, try to get my speed up a little bit. I see all these guys running around. I got to make a few of those plays. So I got to, you know, I've already started thinking about kind of how I'm going to train. So I'd say that's the one thing that I want to uh, always keep working on and continue to throw the ball. Well, um, be in good position to throw the ball accurately, um, continue to be a student of the game. And, you know, I think that's how you can continue to, uh, you know, make improvements. You can't ever think that you're satisfied. You got to continue to build and grow and learn and evolve. And some things are, you know, going to challenge you, but you got to fight through those things. And, um, you know, from my standpoint, there's always room for improvement. Our last one is going to come from Jenna Lane. Hey, Tom, could you just uh, relay the conversation that you had with Jason Light about the number seven before you decided to still play with number 12? You know, Jason kind of gave you all the details. So, you know, I didn't want to come in here and, you know, I know numbers are, you know, for some people mean a lot. And Chris was so cool about it. So in the end, I spoke to Chris and he was, uh, you know, he was amazing. So I just love my experience with Chris and, uh, you know, he's a stud no matter what number he's wearing, 12, 14. He's a baller. So he could wear any number and be great. And uh, I was just very appreciative that he, uh, he allowed me to use it. That's all we have time for today. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys.